there's an application pending before our Department of Health and the, and the Attorney General's office because uh, two shareholders, Sam Lee, David Topper, who own 40% of Prospect Medical Holdings, want to own 100%. Um, there has been one day of hearing, uh, and there we believe is going to be a second day of hearing before the Health Services Council uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, we filed an objection raising a number of uh, things that we thought were problematic. Um, significantly, we uh, discovered that they had not uh, made full disclosure of a whole broad range of uh, lawsuits and things that they've been involved in that the application requires that they disclose to the regulators. So we filed a formal written objection saying, look, here are all these things that we're aware of that they should have disclosed to you, Health Services Council, and they didn't. And so essentially, if you mo move forward, you're acting on an incomplete application. Um, and so the problem with that is obvious. Um, so uh, the things that we want them, meaning the Health Services Council, to drill down on are not only the things that have been omitted from the application, but uh, the contours of this transaction, Wayne, are, are um, there's just a whole lot going on. So, for example, um, there have been 650 to $680 million in dividend payments and fee payments that have been made to Lee and Topper and Leonard Green, the private equity partner that has a 60% interest in this thing. Uh, we know that they had to borrow $1.5 billion uh, because they didn't have the money available to make those dividend payments. And Moody's uh, downgraded their bonds because they thought that these dividend payments are, were, were too steep. Um, so they borrow $1.5 billion to make the dividend payments. They get a downgrade in their bond ratings. They need, then needed to get access to capital, so they did a sale leaseback agreement whereby all other hospitals in the state minus Rhode Island, they basically sold all their real property to this trust and they're renting it back so they could get the equity out of that property, help pay off the debt. Um, they've put Roger Williams Hospital and Fatima up basically as collateral in case there's a default on the sale leaseback agreement. So, um, you know, we've said to the Health Services Council and the AG, look, you've got to vet this. You've got to review this. You've got to get to the bottom of why all these things are going on, because what we're afraid of here is that the very two guys who already own 40 percent of this concern, who are a problem, are going to get 100 percent interest in this concern. And we're worried about how they're laden with debt because of the dividend payments. And we're worried about our hospitals being collateral on the sale leaseback agreement. So uh, the urgency with us and others have uh, filed objections, including Max Wistow, are that we're afraid that the Health Services Council is, is basically going to make short shrift of the application. They're going to move on an incomplete application. Um, the AG has apparently done the opposite. He has slowed the process down. Uh, he is taking advantage of his rights under the statute, the Health Hospital Conversion Act, to do a thorough review. And it appears that he's engaged in that because he's extended his period of time to do his review and he's extended the date by which uh, he will have a decision. And he's also reserved the right to extend further his deadlines November 5th, which is right around the corner. So um, then on the heels of this, this ProPublica article comes out and you'll read that article when you get a chance. But what that has done is it is basically basically done what nobody else has done yet. And that is, is to corral all of the things that we've been objecting to about uh, prospect in Rhode Island, in all the other states in, where, in which they have hospitals, California, Texas, New Jersey, Connecticut, um, Pennsylvania. And so it's basically a catalog of all the things that they've done that are a problem with respect to patient care, with respect to dividend payments, with respect to not paying their creditors and not paying their bills, with respect to closing hospitals, all of those things. Now, 
the application that they have to file with our regulators requires that they don't just disclose what's going on with regard to Roger Williams and Fatima. They've got to disclose what else is going on with respect to all of their affiliates. And they haven't done that. So uh, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of the public comment period at the next hearing, which will be, as I said, come up in the next couple of weeks. But I'm going to blast them on that. Uh, and I am going to make uh, public all of the things that I know were going on with them that they should have put in the application that they didn't. Um, there is also an objection that has been filed by um, the receiver. And he had a footnote in his objection that pointed to like some 20 other civil actions that are going on, some that have to do with Medicare fraud, that Prospect uh, also did not disclose in the application. It is no way to do health care because basically here's what you have. You have Prospect Medical Holdings owned essentially by two rich guys and a private equity firm who have taken $650 million out of the system and Rhode Island is in that system borrowed an enormous amounts of money to pay for those dividends, resulting in a, down, a downgrade of their bonds. And then they had to sell all their real estate and lease it back to get the equity out of it, pay it off. Now, think about the precarious position that puts our hospitals in. It's just not a good situation to be in. It isn't. And if you talk to our members, they'll tell you that they can't get, they can't get the equipment that they need. They can't get the supplies that they need that there are creditor holes on some of the things that they need to get and they call and the creditors say, hey, prospect hasn't paid the bill this month. We're, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not going to shift those supplies. And when this ProPublica article came out, it showed that that's going on all over the country with these guys own hospitals. 